And one of the heartbreaking mysteries of the Surfside collapse, the person known as the voice in the rubble. There had been a national news report identifying that person and criticizing the first responders. Well, tonight we've obtained Miami-Dade Fire Rescue's report on who that person really is and how the situation was handled. CBS 4's Jim Defeaty joins us live tonight. Jim. Uh, we have, as you said, a copy of this report, and the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue has concluded that the person, the voice in the rubble, was that of Teresa Velasquez, 36 years old. She was a entertainment uh, industry executive who was visiting her parents at Surfside at the time of the collapse. Uh, now, her parents also died, and I spoke to her brother tonight, and her brother, David Velasquez, says he's aware of this report, he's seen it, he's been talking to firefighters, and he accepts its conclusions. He believes that it was, in fact, his sister who firefighters were talking to. Now, the previous report that you were talking about talked about whether or not this was Valeria Barth, a 14-year-old girl who had been traveling with her parents from Columbia and was staying at the Surfside Towers at the time of the collapse. USA Today had reported that it was definitively Valeria Barth who firefighters were talking to, but as you can tell, this report says that it was not the case. And in fact, the, the report also says that Valeria's family does not believe that the firefighters were talking to Valeria, but instead that it was Ter Teresa Velasquez. And Jim, how did firefighters reach the conclusion that the person was Teresa Velasquez and not Valeria Barth? Yeah, and this gets a little complicated, but what I can tell you is that there were the initial reports from some firefighters was that they thought they heard the voice say they were in Unit 204, which is the unit that Valeria was staying in. Other firefighters who were interviewed for this report said the woman actually said Unit 304, which is the unit that the Velasquez family was staying in. Now, there was a couple other factors that came into play here. The firefighters, who I think you're seeing in the video trying to work desperately to get to them, was talking to the woman, and at the same time, they were asking her questions from time to time to try to build a rapport. The woman had told them that they were there, that she was there visiting her parents, which falls more in line with Teresa Velasquez's story, as opposed to Valeria, who had accompanied her parents from Columbia to the site. The other thing that they relied upon is the fact that the woman's voice was, had no accent. Valeria, who is a natural Spanish speaker, but did speak English, her family says she definitely had an accent. And Jim, this report also attempts to rebut claims that those firefighters in the video didn't have the necessary equipment to actually reach the person who was calling for help. Tell us more about that. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more sensitive areas. Uh, you can tell that the fire department took this very seriously as they investigated these claims because the report goes into what equipment they had, how they ran electricity and the types of saws they used. I think you're seeing some of that in the pictures. It also attempts to counter the claim that firefighters accidentally set fire to the room where the person was trapped. Now, the other thing that I think is, is clear from reading this report is just how challenging those conditions were for the firefighters. Not only were they in hip deep contaminated water, they were running the risk of electrocution because of the lines that the power generators that they had to fly in there. There was carbon monoxide steeped in the underground area. That was a constant pr problem and threat to them. And they were also facing the risk of absolute collapse from the structure. Jim, such heartbreak for both families. Do we know their reaction? Yeah, as I said, David Velasquez accepts it. The, the, the Barth family we tried to reach out to, but we were told that they were too distraught tonight to actually talk about it, but that they have accepted the idea that Valeria was not the, not the voice that the firefighters were talking to. All right, Jim, thanks again for your reporting on this. Of course, our thoughts with both of those families tonight. Yes, they are.